Hey guys, so I'm here um, at a home that my husband is helping to renovate. He's an electrician and wanted you guys to sort of see like what a day in the life is like. Um, now this isn't typically the work that he does. Um, this is residential as we are in the house. He is typically a, an industrial electrician. He does that like his nine to five every, um, you know, every week. This is a project that his longtime friend and coworker that he met through working with him um, during his regular nine to five, known him for a few years now. Um, he's a great electrician himself and he has like his own side business. And he was, um, you know, contracted to work with some companies and one of them had a house that they needed help with. So he was doing the electric work. So um, my husband was helping him out with this. And my husband is just here himself doing this. And you know, he was just gonna be in his house by himself and um, asked me if I wanted to come. I said, sure. So um, I'm vlogging today because I thought this was a great opportunity for people to see what the life of an electrician is. Um, from my husband's experience, there aren't a lot of black electricians especially in a lot of the jobs that he's on. He's a contracted electrician. He has been an electrician since 2015. So in 2023 now, so I guess um, maybe that's eight years. So he's been doing this a while. And like I said, he mostly does industrial. It's funny because he doesn't really like residential. I don't know if it's like he doesn't really have the patience for it. He's just like, Ugh. I just, like he just doesn't really want to do it like that. But He's good at it. It's really great to see his progress and to see how far he's come. And um, he's on his way to become a journeyman electrician. He could have become one a long time ago. Um, and I'll probably let you hear him talk a little bit more about that and how to become a journeyman electrician. If you guys also have any questions for him, please comment. I'll make sure that I'll get an answer from him. If you guys ever want to see like a sort of like a Q and A video for what he does as an electrician as an industrial electrician and like even working in residential areas like this, um, let me know in the comment section. Maybe I'll just do a, a Q and A video with him so he can tell you a little bit more about what he does. So if you're interested in seeing what my husband does as an electrician, then just keep on watching. Talk us through what you're about to do right now. So this GFCI does not work. I bought a new one, I'm just gonna replace it. Because it can over tighten it and strip the screw, but I've been doing this for a little bit so I know how to finger tap it. Okay. 
and he means finger tapping he's talking about when you press the button on a drill you just you basically just tap it that seems good Too good I'm not going to test this yet because there's some other stuff that's on this circuit that I need to tie in first. Okay. So I'm going to come back to here and a sec once I have wired up the kitchen because the kitchen and this is on the same circuit. Okay. Tell them a little bit about your background and how you became an electrician and actually the work that you do because guys this is not the main work that he does he's an industrial electrician but i can let you let him tell you more about that so where did you go to school well i went to i went to a trade school out in philly mm -hmm. it was on 30th the market it was called Kaplan career institute it was good to go to school and learn some trades and everything but really out of school is where i learned everything right you know what year did you graduate? Uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. Right out of there, I got lucky to start working with an industrial contractor that did solely conveyor belts. Mm -hmm. So I was doing industrial conveyor belts for like 2015, 2018. Mm -hmm. And then I couldn't travel no more around the states because I used to travel a lot and now I don't. Right. I don't just Primarily in New Jersey, mm -hmm. Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I do, I really, it's really industrial stuff, like big pipes and like, I don't know if you've ever seen, well, of course you've seen them. All right, remember back in the day, you would have those green boxes in front of your house. Everybody would come by and then maybe once in a while you'd see some guys working on it, mm -hmm. like big stuff like that. The pipes that go underground, that go back to the distribution center, mm -hmm. you know? Things like that, that's what I end up doing. That's what I do at work, running big pipes on the ground and mm -hmm. uh, you know, wiring up uh, services and what's the thing? switch boxes, gears. That's when the wires, the wires are probably just as big as my arm going oh my into gosh. a lung nut. And to tighten it, you gotta put like a, a rod in it and turn the whole flipping rod just to get it tight. Wow. Yeah, stuff like that. Oh my gosh. So it's a pretty rainy, pretty rainy day outside too. So my husband asked me to grab, asked me to get this bag. It's in the back of his trunk. It's a black book bag with some more stuff in there that he needs. I'm trying to be helpful. Everything that he needed to do coming here and it's like four no, I'm sorry it's
It's like 3.30. Today you did a lot of, what is it called, troubleshooting? Yes. Where you're trying to like sort of diagnose the problem and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I know sometimes that takes time to figure out, yeah. but um, is that often what you're doing as an industrial electrician? Yes and no. Well, I mean, yeah, you're always gonna have to troubleshoot at some point, you know, as an electrician. That's, so troubleshooting is what? Just kind of figuring it's, out? It's part of, it's part of the job because you can wire something up when you're doing industrial, it's like you might be doing a hundred outlets. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I see. And it might, three of them not working. Why aren't three of them working? You go back and you see like the same problem that we have over there. The wire wasn't stripped all the way, so it wasn't making a good connection. Mm -hmm. And it could be something like that. Troubleshooting, right? A whole plethora of things. It's just troubleshooting and just making it work. That's all. Why okay. is it working? Making it work. Basically. Okay. I talked a little bit about your journey to becoming a journeyman mm -hmm. electrician so could you tell um, me a little more about the process of becoming a journeyman electrician well really it's just uh, the amount of schooling hours you do mm -hmm. plus work in the field experience so since I started in 20s I did a year of schooling that, you know most people do in a I didn't do it in apprenticeship you know Technically, I went to a trade school, got a certification, and that was enough schooling hours to get me the certification to allow me to get on to job sites, right? To become an electrical apprentice? Yeah. To, okay. Yeah, then technically I was an apprentice, mm -hmm. but technically I wasn't in an apprenticeship. Oh, I see. I That's see. the difference. You don't have to necessarily go into an apprenticeship. Apprenticeship is just like, technically I was in an apprenticeship because I was working Yeah, I'm about to say, I like was, you were but it wasn't an official because the contractor that I worked for wasn't licensed with the state to say that he trains apprentices. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Right. So even though he can have apprentices on the job, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And technically it's because he's a, a licensed master electrician, mm -hmm. he would be able to um, to train me. And that's, that's what I did. So I recently contacted him and got my work hours from him. Mm-hmm. And so, essentially, in the state of New Jersey, to become a licensed uh, journeyman, you have to do a certain amount of school hours and work experience. And I've completed both of those. It's just literally just going to school for that, get my foot in the door, and then working for five to seven years. Okay. You know, practical work experience. So. Right. So now it's basically, it's just paperwork. Right? Yeah, it's just, it's just getting the paperwork together. And then you'll become a licensed journeyman electrician? I'll get my, it's kind of like a certificate to saying that, stating that I've done, you know, there's a certain amount of hours and school hours. That you've completed. Yeah, that I'm a, a certified journeyman, you know. Mm -hmm. You can only be licensed if you actually take the licensing test. So your position now is you're like a certified electrician. Yeah, certified. I'm a certified electrical technician. Yes. Oh, okay, certified electrical technician. All right. So the main difference between a journeyman and a, an electrical technician is just the bump in pay, or is it just, or that, will, or will you receive more um, duties and opportunities because so, you're a journeyman? Well, that it goes hand in hand. When you are a journeyman, mm -hmm. you've got the state is saying that you've done enough time and you've done enough work hours that. You know, you should be getting paid more because you you can tell this the state that, uh, you know, I've done this X, Y, Z. You know, they got to pay me for that. Like, I've known, I know some people who've been electricians all their lives, but never got any type of certification or anything. And mm. technically have enough knowledge to be a master electrician, oh. but are just electricians because they never cared to get the licensing. You Once you've got that experience, mm -hmm. you can say you've done this for 20 years. You know, they're going to hire you off that experience. They, you right, know, right. That's true. Yeah. Then, uh, you know, even though you can say I've been a, I'm a master electrician, but you can become a master electrician in five years. That's true. You know, because you only need five years to be you just need, in there. In yeah. Schooling, the the right? minute you become a journeyman, you can go take your licensing exam. Mm, right? okay. you like you're you kind of have knowledge of a lot of different things being in this field. So, like, you already kind of mentioned it, like, if the welder has to work around this part and, or, you know, I don't know, like, the engineer, but, it, like, y'all kind of all have to be on the same page and, yeah. and sort of be working around each other. And, like, I know you mentioned, like, mechanics, too, like, all of you guys together, I feel like you come back home learning a little bit about other fields because of, because of your constantly, like, you're around them working mm -hmm. with them. 
Yeah. Can you talk about the three different types of electrical work? I know in the past you told me there's industrial, there's um, commercial, and there's residential. And then talk about like the three different ones and then just explain why industrial is like your favorite. Well, residential, I came in doing electric work, doing industrial. So I just enjoyed it, you know, steel pipes, everything's like out in the open, mm -hmm. brand new, usually industrial is brand new, mm -hmm. you know, you're doing tear outs and putting new things in big stuff, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So there's, you know, usually those jobs tend to last longer, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I like industrial commercial is a little bit more tedious. You know what I'm saying? Like commercial is like you were saying, like in a, a football arena or something. No, uh, you, well, it just depends. Like a commercial job would be like doing renovating an office building. Like if uh, this building was used for meetings mm -hmm. and you know business meetings, da da da. You want to put in that's commercial. Mm -hmm. You know, um, industrial would be like your warehouses, your Amazon buildings. Mm -hmm. Massive buildings that just have lights, outlets, switches, and everything. I mean, they all residential out, uh, residential, industrial, mm -hmm. and uh, commercial all have light switches, outlets, all regular electrical stuff. It's just the sizing of it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then like locations, like you're not going to be an industrial. You're you're most likely not going to be doing a lot of an industrial. You're going to be running a lot of steel pipes, EMT underground. Residential, you're probably just using Romex thin wires, you know, like, and then commercial you're using metal clad MC, mm -hmm. and you know, it's just like, pretty much the real differences is like relatively all about the same work. It's just different um, supplies used to do the same things. Every anything that needs power needs a feed into it, right? So if these houses have wires, right? Mm -hmm. You see these wires hanging in the back of the house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those are carrying wires from the distribution but all right there's a wire going to the top of the panel right mm -hmm. and that's like it for all of these houses and obviously there's like that at warehouses is like that at office buildings and everything right and usually since those are bigger facilities mm -hmm. stuff is usually done underground you know big pipes underground six feet underground boom yeah it'll come up you put a box on top of where it's coming up mm -hmm. and then you connect it up but then out of that box that's out the ground you go to wherever you need to and that keeps things safe so what would you tell anybody wanting to become an electrician um any advice to the young ones coming up anybody can get into this field you can you know learn mm -hmm. you know let me tell you some benefits of uh being an electrician yeah you know you know, the pay is good. Mm -hmm. The pay is good, depending on what you're doing or who you know, mm -hmm. as far as who's paying you. Mm -hmm. Can't see you. Um, the pay is usually good. You usually can get a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the bad part about it is, you know, it's hard work at times. You know, you may be pulling wire, you know? Yeah. And, you know, you, you can't you can't be weak. You know what I'm saying? You got to have some type of strength to you because there's a lot of stuff carrying this, going up steps. You know, and you got to be able to stay calm as far as mm. thinking on your feet and staying calm because you you might be doing something like, what do you do now? You know, you got to stay calm, think on your feet and mm -hmm. being able to ask for help when you need it. You right. know? To be able to always have a job wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Like if you fly to California and you want to you want to work, you know, you if you learn electrical stuff, you learn how to bend pipe, you learn how to read prints. Mm -hmm. You learn how to um, troubleshoot. If you can do those three things, you'll last a really long time as an electrician to make a good money too. Because, you know, if you can troubleshoot, you know, like PLCs and stuff like that, and just mm -hmm. knowing that, then you don't have to be able to physically work with your hands. You mm -hmm. can, you know, direct people. There's so much you can do with becoming an electrician, mm -hmm. you know. I've been able to support my family for a while now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the sad part about it is like, there's most, mostly white males that dominate this field and they they got their family, they got, yeah, he's my friend, that's how I got it. Oh yeah, he knows this. Oh yeah, I'm dating the, the boss's daughter mm. and he, I needed a job and. About who you know sometimes, right? It's been working for them, you know? And that field, their father is electrician. You know, there's, you know how many father-son duos I've worked with? 
-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That we're Caucasian, so there's so much. Okay. I just wanna say thank you for letting me come along today. It's been fun. Whoa. Yes. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I can definitely ask my husband. He'll be able to answer them for you. And then, yes. And um, I'll post the answers to some of your questions that you have. And like I said before, if you want like a Q&A video, um, you know, you can drop your questions below and we can just do a separate video of um, just asking some more questions about um, what he does um, and just a little more knowledge that he has. Um, because I know over the course of these last eight years he's learned a lot and um and he's in the process of becoming a journeyman electrician so um you know some more opportunities are hopefully going to be coming his way soon also mm -hmm. i mean i've worked with people who have felonies and i've worked my boss has hired well my former boss had hired somebody who was a, a murderer you know and in this field you can work with people who have done all types of things you know so if you had a checkered past, mm -hmm. you can find work in this field right. and make a good living, you know, mm -hmm. you know, make mm -hmm. really good money. I know a guy of mine was in jail for 10 years, got out in his 30s, mm -hmm. you know, now has a three hundred thousand dollar house, his own business. You know, his wife doesn't work. He's take care of all four of his kids. Mm -hmm. And he has, you know, he's he's flipping properties renovating them he's doing the work himself got some of his buddies right and you know does, that just goes well. back to my point like you know it doesn't matter what you've done with electrical you can you know get in there and make some money like even if you know you are an electrician and something happens to you let's say you're you can't do electrical for five years or something like that mm -hmm. you break your leg you know it's like riding a bike once you get back on it you're gonna be fine right so so okay well Thank you for that positive message. Yeah. So basically saying that being an electrician is for anybody and anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, no matter man. where you come from, no matter what you've done. And um, that's really important too. So. so I got home and I realized I never closed out this video properly. So I just want to thank you guys for watching. Um, this was a really cool video to do. I'm glad my husband was able to sort of take me to work today. And um, this is the first time I've kind of really experienced him doing this. So... Um, it was fun for me. It was fun for us. So I hope you got some enjoyment out of it. Anybody wanting to become an electrician um, and received a positive message from a lot of his experience and knowledge that he has gained over the course of these eight years. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone.